Hello there everybody, it is me Feaser Bunny and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed building video. Alright, so today we have a very unique and ambitious build. Unique because we don't usually see builds like these in the community and ambitious because this build is huge. Like it's built on a 64 by 64 lot in Windenburg, which is the largest lot that we get in The Sims 4 and it uses up the whole entire space and I'm pretty sure you guys can tell that by the length of this video, it is a pretty ambitious build. So of course we're speed building the Olympic Stadium, which is a community lot venue and it's a very timely and relevant thing to do because as we all know, the 2016 Olympics are going to take place later this year in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And I'm actually really excited for it because we all know that Brazil knows how to throw a party. It's going to be insane. It's going to be colorful. It's going to be diverse and it's going to be huge, which is just crazy. And I'm so excited. Like we all know that every Olympic Games is like one of the biggest ever events in the world. So um, that's always something that I look forward to, even though I'm not necessarily a sports fan. I always look forward to watching the Olympics. Anyway, speaking of the Olympics, I'm going to get my question out as soon as I can for you guys. So for this video, I actually have two questions for you guys. My first question is, how many Olympic Games have taken place during your lifetime? So basically, since you were born, I want to know how many Olympic Games have taken place since then. Then my second question is, out of all the Olympic Games that happened ever, um, which opening ceremony is your guys' favorite? We all know that the opening ceremony is a huge part of the games. It sets the tone and the pace of the Olympics. So each opening ceremony is unique because it showcases the culture of the host country. And I want to know your guys' favorite opening ceremony for any Olympic Games. Also, we're going to discount the Rio Olympics of 2016 because technically it hasn't happened yet. So we can't talk about it in this video because everything is speculation at this point so we're not going to include it unfortunately okay so please keep that in mind when you comment below and please do comment below because I'm really really curious what you guys will say anyway I'm gonna go ahead and actually answer my questions myself so during my lifetime there were five Olympics since I was born I was born in 1993 and uh, like I said, there were five Olympic Games that happened since then. The first one was in 96 in Atlanta, USA. And then the second one is the Millennium Games in Sydney, Australia. And then the third one is actually the first one that I watched on TV, which is um, the 2004 Athens Games. And then... Uh, fourth one is um, the Beijing Olympics in 2008 and of course the fifth one is the very recent Olympics the 2012 London Olympics and my second question um, my favorite Olympic Games opening ceremony by a landslide it's a pretty easy choice for me it's definitely the Beijing Olympics the Beijing Olympics of 2008 is my favorite Olympic Games in general but the opening ceremony of it is insane like the precision the futuristic aspect the modernity but the you know we also have like traditional colorful precise like literally like to an inch none of those dancers like made mistakes like it's insane so and also, they, like, the volunteers for that game, like, there's so many people involved. And there's also so much press behind those Olympic Games. Like, the, the media coverage is insane. Like, China knows how to throw an event, especially if it's televised worldwide. The Chinese will take advantage of it. And they know how to play the media really well. So, definitely, that is my favorite Olympic Games opening ceremony. For sure. Like, it's it's amazing also the beijing olympics is actually very very influential for me personally because it happened at a time when i was at a crossroads 2008 i was in high school and i was deciding what to pursue for my future i was already considering becoming an architect but when the beijing olympics happened 
it kind of sealed the deal for me and kind of made me realize the possibilities of architecture, how big we can go and how ambitious we can go and how creative we can push ourselves as architects. And I'm just like, okay, I'm sold. I'm going to take an entrance exam to the best art school in the country and hopefully they'll accept me. I want to be an architect. And none of that would have probably happened if not for the 2008 Olympics taking place in Beijing. Also, the Philippines and China are neighbors and uh that's also probably why we kind of felt a little bit of that olympic fever because it's kind of close um so yeah anyway i'm pretty sure you guys who follow me can already tell that i'm not the sportiest person in the world the good news is that i have actually finished all my pe classes from elementary high school college i'm done okay That means that for some reason, I survived all my PE classes. I don't know how I did it, but I'm done. Um, But you all know that I'm not the sportiest person ever. So definitely you guys don't expect me to talk about sports in this video. But definitely just, you know, telling stories about myself and the Olympics and what I know about it. What little stuff I know. I will try to share with you guys, but definitely if you guys are assuming that I will talk about sports in this video, then you are mistaken because I am not the person to talk about sports. Somebody else out there is more qualified than that, than me to talk about those type of things, okay? Anyway, so the Olympic Stadium is a multi-sporting event. It is a huge building and the reason why it's so big is that it has to accommodate a variety of different sports for the Olympics. Usually the sports that take place in the Olympic Stadium is soccer or football, depending on where you are in the world. It's probably called soccer or football. Um... (laughs) This Olympic Stadium is designed to host soccer because it has like a soccer field in the middle of it, which you guys will see later on towards the middle. And also other sports that are hosted by the Olympic Stadium is athletics. Athletics is kind of an umbrella term, I guess, the way I understand it. It's kind of like an umbrella term to refer to about over a dozen sports that encompass the athletics fields and these sports are like um track like 100 meters 200 meters 300 meters um long jump um pole jump i'm not sure what you call that pole thing but i think that's also part of athletics discus throw and javelin throw as well the only reason why i'm somewhat familiar with the sports is that i believe i played some games before Probably on the SNES. <laughs> yes, I'm that old. Um, yeah, I played some games before that actually um, I was quite good at, and they were like Olympic games or whatever. So yeah, that's why I know what a javelin throw is, what a discus throw is, what a track is, of course. So anyway, right now we're making a pretty crucial part of any Olympic stadium, and it is the track, or in my country, it is known as the oval um are is the are the philippines are we the only people who call it the oval it, does everyone else call it just track i'm not sure i'm asking you guys too many questions but i would love to know though anyway in my country we call this the oval and a uh, funny story when i was like four years old um, my aunt took me to like a sporting event in our whole hometown and our hometown only has one stadium but it is huge of course, because all tracks are the same size. I believe the total length of a track is a kilometer. And my aunt wasn't paying attention to me during that event. So I just wandered through and I got lost. Not really. I just followed the the oval or the track. And she was so like, she was, of course, she was probably scared because I was lost. But she was, she also found it hilarious that I walked all the way around the track as a four-year-old. Like, I could have died. No, I'm kidding. But I, it was probably exhausting for me. But I didn't really realize it at that time because I was just walking, you know. And I was four years old. So this was probably, like, sometime in the 90s. So hilarious, hilarious, right? Okay, anyway. 
The roofing is actually pretty fun. I showed this to some of my friends who also do simming videos. Oh my gosh, I want to give them a shout out. Okay, I want to say hi to Pinoy Simmer. Hey, Jen and DJ Simmer. Hey, DJ. Hey, guys. Um, They have channels. If you guys want to check them out, it's Pinoy Simmer and DJ Simmer. I've showed this to... um. The, to, to those two and they actually thought that the roof was really nice they were like that roof is awesome and I'm just like yes thank you so much I worked really hard on the shape of this build to kind of make it look pretty legit because um I don't know what that weird pause was about probably just grabbed like some water or whatever but um yeah stadiums the shape of the stadium of course varies differently from stadium to stadium because some stadiums are huge and some stadiums are just you know one stand or like one pack of bleachers if you guys got what i mean so um this one is definitely a major major stadium because you know it's an olympic stadium it's expected to host major sporting events that's why the shape of it is pretty huge like and also, I tried my best to make bleachers that surround the actual stadium and the actual shape of the oval track. But, um, of course, we all know that in The Sims 4, we can only make 90 degree, um, 90 degree stairs. You know, we couldn't even make them in angles anymore because we can do that in The Sims 2. So I kind of miss that aspect because I love putting stairs and angles in the sims 2 but anyway i tried my best to make it look like the stairs are actually covering the entire kind of perimeter of the oval but you know this is the best that i can do and surprisingly it actually turned out really nice like i had great expectations honestly coming to into this build because i know that stadiums are huge and ambitious but i've built a bunch of stadiums before in the sims 3 so i kind of knew what to expect but the final result is really amazing like the final product of all my hard work really blew me away and once again i'm not trying to toot my horn in her here or anything but like it's crazy how much like your expectations can either fall flat or can be overcome because this really overcame all my expectations it, it, it surpassed it it exceeded it like 10 times i had a vision of the olympic stadium that i wanted to make but little did i know that it would look as good as it does in the final product i'm pretty sure you guys have probably seen it by now in the intro preview that i usually do if you guys haven't, please stick through to the end of the video because the walkthrough that I have planned for you guys is awesome. So anyway, like I said, this is a huge, huge venue and um, this actually can be set as multiple community lots. Um, so basically, most of the activity happens downstairs, but I actually designed this lot to be... Um, to be set as either a bar, a gym, a retail store, or a spa. So you guys have four options as to how you want to set your, um, you know, how, how you want to set this venue for yourself and for your game. You know, so um, there is a store there that sells like athletics clothes. There's a bar where, you know, the, the, the people who are watching the games can grab a drink, you know, during breaks or whatever, or after the game. There's even a spa, and there's also um, a gym as well. So you guys can see that I actually used red as the primary color for this team. I'm not sure which teams actually use the same exact color combination as the ones that I chose, but I chose red, white, and kind of like a navy blue color. Um, so, you know, those three colors are pretty versatile. Like, you know, they can be USA, they can be Philippines, um, they can be Cuba, they can be Russia, they can be whatever. Um, they can be France, you know. So feel free to make this more personal, but those are the colors that I chose. And actually, right now we are just putting the navy blue color. It almost looks like an indigo. You know what? I'm going to call it an indigo color. And a fun little thing that I do, which I learned by doing another build that I 
recently did is these checkered board patterns. I felt like they really bring the facade or the front of the building to life. And also it looks pretty athletic, you know, so that's great. Kind of reminds me of a soccer ball, actually, soccer ball pattern. Uh, so yes. Um, so yeah, pretty much continuing with the color scheme of the stadium. I really, really like that red. It's, it's like, um, it's almost like a maroon, uh, but you know, let's just call it red. Let's not make things more complicated, even though some of you guys will probably call me out because it is maroon, but whatever. Okay. I'm really, really happy with my color choices. It's very, um, it's. It's very festive because there's like so much color. When you think of stadiums, you don't usually think of like a lot of color. You know, it's mostly like white and steel and glass and whatever. But this time, since it's the Olympic Games, I wanted it to have like that festive feel. So, you know, because the Olympics is a festival and, um, you know, all countries around the world celebrate it for sure. And all countries are represented in the Olympics as well. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, um, let's see here. I actually live right next to my country's national stadium. It's a really small stadium because it was built um, almost 100 years ago. So it's small. It has a seating capacity of 12,000 people, I believe. It's called the Rizal Memorial Stadium. And it's home to my country's um, soccer team called Philippine Askals and every time they have a game I can hear the crowd and I'm not a big fan of sports but if I had to choose what sport that I want to support I would probably choose soccer because I'm very familiar with soccer um or football I'm sorry I'm confused somebody somebody please explain to me what the difference between you know what whatever don't answer that I will look that up myself because I know google and wikipedia so whatever um yes speaking of soccer we're currently working on the soccer field which is fun i've always wanted to do this in the game making striped patterns that technique is a pretty popular thing to do way 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 back in the sims 2 days every garden every lawn has that kind of striped pattern of foliage or of, of grass so um i'm really excited to actually bring it back in the sims 4 and I'm bringing this up because The Sim Supply actually talked about this in another one of his videos. I just don't remember which one, but I remember him talking about the striped grass way back in The Sims 2 days. And it feels like it's been forever, but uh, I miss The Sims 2. Anyway, um, as you guys probably noticed that this building, it's somewhat completely symmetrical on both sides. You can tell, though, which one is the front because the front has that colonnade or colonnade, uh, you know, it, it has like that kind of overhang on over the main entrance way with the um, columns and stuff. So that is the front. In case you guys are confused, it's pretty easy to tell which is the front anyway, because it's the, it's the part where it's facing the road and stuff. And this is actually pretty important for me. You have to put a lot of branding, especially if you're making community lots, because very rarely the community lots have like, empty space on their walls especially on the outside because that can be used for advertising so that's what i did with those posters that i just placed a while back um those posters actually require you to do well in the athletic career but if you're building they are automatically unlocked so those posters you guys better get used to them because i will use them all over this build like literally i only use two types of wall posters because we have a lot of posters in the game but most of the sporty ones are meant for wall for like teens and for kids because they have like that tape that sticks them to the wall and I didn't like that and these two posters that I'm using are the only ones that actually have or that don't have the tape on the corners of them so that's that uh the longer side underneath the bleachers is where the bar um retail store uh spa and gym are located and on the shorter sides on each side are locker rooms for the athletes okay i'm going to be talking about that more later on but the first kind of community area that i we're building is the um kind of the bar area so the bar is uh 
you know, it's pretty straightforward. Honestly, I was, I wanted to make a cafeteria, <laughs> but we don't have restaurants in the game. And I felt like making a cafe would be kind of anti-contextual. That is a big word. Making a cafe, I felt like was kind of out of place because, you know, I mean, some people will probably like coffee during games, but most people will probably enjoy beer or alcoholic drinks and stuff. So I felt like a bar was actually a good thing to include, even though it's not necessarily something you would expect from, you know, a sports venue, but whatever, it's there. Um, and it makes this building versatile. Once again, all the requirements are fulfilled. So you guys can just feel free to, um, make this a bar if you want to. Um, so yeah. I use a lot of spa day stuff because those are the ones that have like an athletic feel to them. And of course, I try to maintain the color scheme. We have red, black, which is I used actually a lot in the interior and also um, navy blue. And also in the interiors, I used quite a lot of um, brick accents as well, which I don't know why I used brick, but whatever. Nothing about brick says athletic, I think. I'm not sure. You know what? I take that back because baseball, brick baseball <laughs> no because if you think of baseball you think of new york right and if you think of new york apartment you think of brick walls and stuff so i was able to connect that give it to me guys give it to me okay so also in the um we're working on the retail store now which is more of a clothing store like a souvenir store for clothes and for like bags or hats and stuff that's what i was en envisioning this to be but really really quickly back to the restaurant area i love how i made some chairs mitch mismatched <laughs> it's just a little trick that i learned from watching the legacy when she's making like mismatched chairs and stuff it's quite fun so this area over here we're working on dressing rooms actually so there's four of those walk-in closets that came with get together and you know we can pretend like the sims are um kind of trying on clothes inside which they actually are you know and also you can set the sims this athletic wear to kind of match the the team that they're supporting in this stadium um and of course the furniture is pretty much the same uh, all throughout. It's the same set of counters, the same set of, um, pretty much everything. <laughs> so, yeah. And these shelves are actually quite fun. I left them empty, actually, because I could not find anything to put in on them that looks like, um, it would be sold in athletic stores. Uh, so I just left them empty. I was like, okay, whatever. And by the way, I also use those lights actually quite often. Um, those lights came with, uh, <laughs> cause we're using only, no, I'm kidding. Uh, the lights that I'm talking about are those kind of showbiz looking lights. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys can tell what I'm talking about. Um, but those lights ca can be unlocked by performing well in the, comedy profession or the entertainment career there we go uh so that's quite fun i really really like those lights because they give off three colors which is blue green and red and i actually kind of like the dimension that they give to this build and of course for the store we're selling some jerseys which are actually hoodies because we don't have any jerseys that are on hangers in the game yet um so those are some clothes for both men and women and then these are actually quite fun because i really wanted to include bags for sale because i don't know when i think of athletic stuff i think of bags for some strange reason so i did place in a couple of backpacks over here once again keeping in mind the color scheme of our venue red and blue yes and also placing in some cashiers to kind of um, satisfy the requirements of this venue as a retail store. You guys can actually probably just make this a retail store and sell everything and make millions. And this is a really fun thing that I did, actually. I saw this being done by The Sims 
team and they place mannequins on these pedestal display things which is quite fun also i did actually test this out and the mannequins i gave them some outfits um that are sporty and kind of once again coincide with the look that we have for our team so the mannequins when you download this lot they will have clothes on because i did package them with outfits okay so um okay this is where it gets kind of complicated no not really um so this is a pretty ambitious build and i think it's unavoidable at this point that i really had to edit some parts out um the only parts that i edited are the parts where i was being redundant the in case the good case example of that I could not get my voice right. I mean, my words together. I could not get my words together. A good example of that case, there we go, is the case with these toilets. Now, these are public restrooms. Um, there is a public restroom for a man and a woman. And I only did one here in the footage that you guys can see because... Um, even though there's actually four of them in this venue, I only decided to furnish one with you guys because I feel like it's really redundant and the decoration, all the furnishings, it's pretty much the same anyway. So you guys didn't miss out on much. And that only happened with the toilets and with the locker rooms and everything else is included. Oh yeah, that only happened with the toilets, locker rooms, and the ticket booths. I furnished one of each of those because those actually have multiple types of them. So um, yeah, we have, I believe you have a total of like four sets of bathrooms and I'm calling them sets because each bathroom set has two bathrooms in it. It has one for the men and one for the women. And of course, the blue is for the men and the red is for the women. I really don't want to get myself into a controversy here. The only reason why I decided to put um, or to assign colors specifically for the male and female gender is that it's so is that so you guys can differentiate which bathrooms are for the men and which bathrooms are for the women um the reason for that's actually pretty easy the doors that we have in the game are you know can be set per gender and of course men and women have separate bathrooms and locker rooms and stuff but if you play with the walls down, the doors disappear and there's no way to tell which facility is for which gender if you have the walls down. And it's so much of a hassle to keep the walls up all the time, right? So for me, in order to make it easier to differentiate between facilities for men and facilities for women, I put accent walls that are blue for the boys and that are red for the girls. That is the only reason why I chose to kind of do that kind of um, emphasis, I guess, because it's easier to see with walls down which facility is for boys and which facility is for girls. I wish we actually had more um, signage, I guess, so, which, so, so we can just plop them on walls and stuff, and we can automatically tell you know the female toilet from the male toilet female locker room from the male locker room but you know what um i think it works because if you guys play with the walls down you can clearly see that one is for the boys and one is for the girls and thanks to the color schemes that i chose it's pretty easy to tell so that's the only reason you guys please don't think that i am a gender freak or whatever like let's be real hashtag no labels i always say that in all of my videos and i don't want anybody to get the wrong idea because yeah that is not my intention and i don't really you know want any controversy on me so yeah that's the only reason why i chose to kind of do that color scheme so anyway you guys saw me furnish the locker rooms there and then this area over here is actually the spa it's kind of weird, right? Thinking of a spa underneath an Olympic stadium. But, you know, if athletes are tired, if they get a sprain or something, if they need a massage to loosen up their limbs, then, of course, they don't have to go far. They can just go downstairs and enjoy all the amenities that a spa has to offer. Um, so, yeah. By the way, you guys probably haven't noticed it yet, but I think at this point, 
most of the toilets are already furnished yay so even though we only furnished one in this video um i through the magic of editing and showbiz and camera work um they are now all fully furnished so anyway the spa actually has its own character i didn't use um originally i was gonna use the same colors and paint and wallpapers that i used all throughout this build but eventually i felt like it was pretty inappropriate for the spa so the spa has gained a little bit of a unique kind of look to it because i used a lot of wood in this particular area of the build which um you know the reason why i used wood anyway is because the spa items that came with spa day most of them don't have a black option instead of a wood so in order to kind of just compromise i just you know used wood instead you know if you can't beat him join him uh so that's why the spa has a nice little um has its own kind of character to it and then over here we have a nice little fountain area and once again using some items from spa day as well i'm i will actually replace that fountain because i only discovered this in this part but that fountain actually there's like two of them there's one in decorative and then there's another one in like build by mode and then the one that i originally placed was in build by mode and then when i actually kind of tried to furnish the upstairs i realized that it was like it was traveling to the wall upstairs like it was too tall so thankfully i found a shorter fountain in buy mode uh so yeah and once again you know using furniture that is pretty unique to the spa area because the furniture they that i used here could not be found in the other parts of this bill which is quite fun threw in a nice little um fish tank over there as well just for you know for added comfort and to make things more versatile and also all the spa requirements spa equipment i did place them so if you guys want to make this a spa then feel free to do so because all your requirements are available in this build and finally the last of the four venue options that we're going to be working on is the gym i feel like the gym is actually the most relevant option for you guys to choose because it is a stadium gym athletics whatever um so you know like i said you guys have a bunch of different options to choose and it's a pretty versatile venue just i feel like the gym is the most relevant one so anyway the gym of course has gym equipment and we're placing now some con concession areas you know we have a lot of drinks to keep all the athletes hydrated and of course we have a coffee machine and also a microwave for snacks and stuff for people who are working out um i i like to point out that um the windows in these are actually like all the windows in this venue actually open up towards the track instead of towards the outside so pretty much the focal point of this whole entire thing is the center part of it which is the track and the oval and the bleachers and things like that um so all the venue options that you guys have they have a view of the athletes area so that's actually quite fun i ended up choosing just base game options here for the workout equipment because as much as i wanted to use the spa day ones i feel like the style that they were in was pretty um just pretty it didn't match with the color schemes that i wanted and i wanted it to i wanted this particular gym to look pretty athletic and pretty um energetic i guess uh, as opposed to a more laid back look that this stuff from spa day has so i chose like some vibrant red of course to kind of keep our um color scheme in place and i actually took out one of those punching bags because um they were too cramped and crowded uh so um i did that off camera just to make sure that everything functions properly and all that good stuff and then um yeah throwing in a couple of tv screens for people who are working out to um you know watch some aerobics or some training material and stuff like that and then another part where we're building just one um uh, piece of it and then the rest i did off camera 
Um, this is the ticket booth, actually, which is supposed to be the main entrance to this venue. And we actually have four ticket booths in total. And each ticket booth has one um, kind of receptionist. So technically, we have a total of eight receptionists in all. I felt like since this is like a, an Olympic stadium, you know, during major events, it's going to be super, super crowded. And, uh, you know... As much as possible, we would like to avoid lines and queues and things. So I tried to make as many <laughs> as I can, as many ticket booths as I can. The ticket booths occupy the corners, actually, of this lot, which is an awkward shape. But I feel like it's just right for the ticket booths. And of course, we have a lot of posters for the brand, for the sporting teams that we want to support. And also just adding in some decorative things over here i actually had a lot of ocd here because none of the the um none of the counters wanted to snap the way i wanted them to so um i just used the alt key instead which is something that i overcome and i something that i'm super proud of because you guys know back then i refused to use the alt key because i want objects to snap and now i'm just like over it <laughs> I, I i learned to kind of loosen up a bit so there you go and also that area was built on a diagonal as well so that's probably why those counters didn't snap and there we go we just replaced that one fountain thing also i did a lot of complicated floor works in this build like you guys just saw by the magic of camera editing and showbiz i always say that for some strange reason um that i added an another kind of tile that um i didn't choose before but i chose like a peach colored tile um to kind of just complement everything else that we had and kind of tone it down a bit because all the colors that we had are so kind of bright and in your face and incorporating like a little bit of a neutral color kind of smoothens it out a bit so right now we're working on the second floor of this area stadium whatever <laughs> yeah of the stadium but the second floor actually there's nothing in it it's just a really really long hallway that leads to the bleachers and in order to kind of give it some purpose, I just placed it uh, as a gallery, I guess. You know, maybe as a Hall of Fame or like, you know, once again, more promotion, I guess, or whatever. And actually, the color scheme, if you guys just see it right now, reminds me so much of Wildcats. Yes, Wildcats, you guys. High School Musical, of course. Um, But they play basketball in High School Musical, though, so they won't really use the stadium. Yeah, whatever. Um, but the color scheme actually that I chose is pretty Wildcats with the exception of the blue one, but whatever. And then this area over here on the topmost level of the stadium is kind of like a place for the commentators, I guess. I don't know what you guys call those. Those commentators. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're, they're commentators. Like those are the people who are like narrating the game, I guess. Once again, more floor works. Like... If you guys actually download this, the flooring that I did is pretty elaborate, especially towards like the ticket booth definitely has a really elaborate flooring. And also the the um the oval, like the area surrounding the track has pretty elaborate um pattern work on the tile as well. And also on the bleachers, they're all they also have a pretty elaborate tiles as well. But I decided to not record those because they just took so much time. And you know, I kept changing them because I wanted it to look pretty athletic. So you know we have a bunch of different interesting shapes like arrow shapes and all that good stuff. But you know it's it's good. There's also two of these commentator booths. I'm gonna call them those commentator booths. Sounds pretty cool. We have two commentator booths. I'm not sure but in my mind each one of those can have two commentators and I guess we can have two commentators per opposing team. I guess which I think isn't the case in real life because I think in real life um, there's just a pair of commentators not necessarily on the opposing team so whatever anyway landscaping wise i kept it pretty pretty simple actually um there is no plant in this venue which is not something that i normally do but you know we already have a lot of stuff going on 
Plus the location actually has a lot of trees anyway. So I just created like some nice little patterns over here for um patches of grass, I guess. And that that's enough for me, you know, to bring out the stadium. It didn't feel like it needed to have any foliage. You know, we we you know there was no need to gild the lily. As they say, because I feel like if I place trees and stuff, it will just cover some of the architectural elements that we worked really hard on. And right now, we are putting in some flagpoles, and I actually have to credit my college professor for my design class um, for this because he is going to kill me if he sees this without any flagpoles, because I believe each public building is required required to have a flagpole i'm not sure how it is in your guys's country's regulations and stuff but in my country i believe every public building needs to have a visible flagpole um for the public like i was designing a hotel for my design class it wasn't even it wasn't even like a government structure it was like a hotel but my professor was like oh you still need a flagpole so yeah you know you learn things you really learn things and um in the words of the amazing Lindsay Lohan in Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, being a teacher is the most noble thing a person can do. Anyway, I would just did some more detail work on the soccer area and I had a really hard time lighting this thing up actually because the stadium bleachers and the surrounding area is actually well lit, but the oval track and the um, field, the soccer field, is pretty badly lit but i tried my best to give it you know the lighting that it deserves but in the end i still failed um but you know what i actually really like the touches of those um kind of i don't know what to call those actually those lights that i placed on columns i feel like they ha make it look pretty legit and speaking of those lights i use those lights a lot i felt like those are the most appropriate light for this venue and they look pretty awesome they look pretty legit as a lighting source for a sporting venue once again i tried my best to make things sporty so um this thing illuminates amazing at night like it's insane it's absolutely gorgeous and like really though it looks probably even better at night compared to how it does during the daytime but you know what it also looks great during the day i don't know i'm just really really proud of it like it's this is this is awesome right like this is like i'm so happy about it and of course you know, we have to kind of credit the people who thought about this first. When they were actually showing off The Sims 4 when it was starting out, they um, actually showed off a stadium, and I kind of was inspired by that. When I saw that stadium for the first time when they were doing the, li the live stream for The Sims 4, I was like, whoa, that looks amazing. And then looking back at it, I was like, okay, I could improve on this a lot more. So like I said, the stadium turned out much, much better than I was expecting. And I placed those lights that came with Spa Day actually outside. And it brings like a whole nother dimension to the stadium, like the neon lights or LED lights are just like amazing and they kind of really bring the exterior to life at night especially you know how it has that energy and has that futuristic feel but I think that is pretty much it for the speed build part of this video let's go ahead and cut into the screenshots of the floor plans as I mentioned before most of the activity happens on the ground floor but I included the second third and even the roof as well because it's so detailed and all that good stuff. Also, I have to put up, point out that this is also one of the most expensive venues that I made. It's also one of the largest. Last time I checked, this thing cost a total of 700,000 simoleons, over 700,000, that's almost a million. So your guys' sims better have hefty pockets to move into this place. Or you can just do what I do and enter the mo the mother loji but whatever like i said that is going to be it for the speed build part of this video 
And I'm also going to wrap up my commentary right here as well, okay? So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this pretty unique and ambitious build. And I really, really had fun doing this with you guys as well. So yeah, like I said, that's going to be it for my commentary for this video. Once again, please don't forget to hit that like, favorite, and subscribe button if you guys had fun watching this video because it really does help out the channel a lot, okay? You all have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the video and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Thank you.